Welcome. Today, we are pulling back the curtain on one of the most exciting ideas in digital finance. It's called restaking. We're going to break down step by step how a single asset can go to work in multiple places all at once, creating what we're calling the layer cake of trust. You know, anything you've been told about earning yield in crypto, well, get ready to rethink it. For most people, that 4 or 5% you get from staking Ethereum, that's it. That's the top. It's kind of seen as the baseline interest rate of the internet. But what if I told you that for a certain kind of player, an industrial scale operator, that number isn't the finish line? It's just the starting block. So this is the big question, right? This is the mystery we're going to solve today. I mean, it sounds completely impossible, like a magic trick or something, but it's not. It's a real fundamental change in how digital security actually works. And honestly, getting this concept is the key to understanding where crypto infrastructure is headed next. All right, here's our game plan. First, we're going to look at what's called the lazy capital problem. It's the whole reason restaking even exists. Then we'll build our layer cake of yield piece by piece. After that, we have to talk about the risks involved. And finally, we'll see how this could translate into a massive multiplier effect for a company like BMNR and why this is truly a revolution for generating yield. Okay, so to really get why restaking is such a big deal, we first have to understand the problem it was designed to fix. And it really all comes down to a simple idea. Right now, billions and billions of dollars in capital are just, well, they're being kind of lazy. So when you stake Ethereum today, your money gets locked up to do one job, and only one job, secure the main Ethereum network. It helps validate transactions, it proposes blocks, and for that service, it earns a yield. But that's it. It's what we call single-threaded. Think about it like having this superstar employee who you've told can only ever answer the phone, even though they've got a dozen other incredible skills. That capital is just not living up to its full potential. To make this super clear, let's use a real-world example. Imagine you own a big piece of land. You wouldn't just grow corn on it and call it a day, right? No way. You'd get creative. You'd put up solar panels to sell electricity. Maybe you'd build some wind turbines above those. You might even drill for oil deep underneath it all. See? You're using the same single asset, that plot of land, to generate multiple different revenue streams, all at the same time. And that is exactly what we staking does for the digital world. It's the crypto version of monetizing that land in four different ways. You take your Ethereum that's already staked, and you repledge it to help secure other networks too. These networks get the security they need without having to find billions in new cash, and, in return, they pay you a fee. All of a sudden, your one asset is working multiple jobs and, this is the best part, it's getting multiple paychecks. All right, now that we've got the basic idea down, let's actually build this layer cake of yield from the ground up. We're going to use an industrial scale operator like Bitmine Immersion, their ticker is BMNR, as our case study to see how a boring 4% return could theoretically get turned into something, well, a lot bigger. So, layer one, this is the foundation. It's the bedrock that everybody already knows about. An operator like BNMR stakes its Ethereum on the main network. They run the validators, they secure the blockchain, and for doing that super important job, the network pays them. Right now, that's about a 4% yield. For almost everyone else, the story ends right here. But for us, this is just the plate that our cake is gonna sit on. Now, let's add our first new layer, the Oracle. You see, blockchains are kind of in their own little bubble. By themselves, they have no clue what the price of Apple stock is or who won the Super Bowl. They need a trusted service, an oracle, to feed them that outside information reliably. And those oracle networks? They need security. They need people putting capital on the line to promise they're providing good data. A big operator can use the servers it already has to also be a validator for an oracle. And for that, they earn a fee. Now, let's be conservative and say that adds an extra 2% yield. And here's the magic part. They don't have to spend a single extra dime on hardware to do this. It's just new software on the machines they already own. This is pure software margin. We just went from 4% to a 6% total yield. Next up, layer three, the bridge. The crypto world is this huge universe of thousands of different blockchains. And for that universe to work, they all need to be able to talk to each other, to send money and data back and forth safely. That's what a bridge does. Now, historically, bridges have been a huge weak spot, getting hacked all the time. The fix? Securing them with a massive decentralized group of validators. So our operator can choose to validate for one of these big bridge networks too. 
Every single time somebody sends money from one chain to another, a validator has to sign off. The amount of traffic on these bridges is just enormous, so the fees can be really significant. Let's pencil in another 3% yield for this job. You see the stacking effect now? We're at a 9% total yield in our model, more than double where we started. Okay, our fourth layer is a really cool one, the data availability or DA layer. You see all those other networks we just talked about? They create a tidal wave of transaction data and storing all of that on the main blockchain is super, super expensive. So they use a DA layer as a kind of cheap temporary hard drive. An operator that already has high density storage infrastructure is in a perfect position to offer the service. So let's say the yield for providing that data storage is a nice, healthy 4%, okay? Let's put this all together. We start with 4% from the base layer. We add two from the Oracle, that's six. Add three from the bridge, we're at nine. Add four from the data layer, now we're at 13. And then you can factor in other network rewards that can realistically tack on another 2%. And there you have it. A 4% yield has been transformed into a 15% yield machine. Now I know exactly what you're thinking. If you can earn 15%, why on earth isn't every single person staking Ethereum doing this? And that right there is the multi-billion dollar question. The answer comes down to one simple, powerful word, risk. And this is where we see how an industrial operator can build a serious competitive advantage. You've got to understand the trade-off here. With that amazing reward comes a whole lot of responsibility. Because when you opt in to secure these other networks, you're also agreeing to the penalties if you mess up. This is not free money. It's earned by taking on risk that most people just can't or won't take on. And that penalty is called slashing. If your validator reports the wrong price as an oracle, you get slashed. If it goes offline and fails to sign a bridge transaction, you get slashed. If it loses the data it was supposed to be storing, you guessed it, you get slashed. For a regular person running a validator at home, a simple power outage could be financially catastrophic. It could cost them their entire stake. It's genuinely terrifying. But this is where the opportunity is for a major operator. What's a complete nightmare for a small-time staker is just a manageable operational problem for an industrial machine. A company like BMNR can build what you might call a slashing shield. They've got backup power, redundant internet, 24-7 monitoring. They don't just manage risk. Their entire business model is built to absorb it. And because they can absorb that risk, they get to capture that massive reward. And there's another layer to this advantage. Being a fully regulated American company a lot of new services, especially ones dealing with tokenized real-world assets, are probably going to require their validators to be compliant U.S. entities. Well, a U.S.-domiciled public company like BMNR is perfectly set up for this, which could give them access to exclusive, high-yield deals that are just totally off-limits to everyone else. Okay, so we've laid out the tech and the competitive advantage. Now, let's run through a hypothetical model to see how all this could actually translate into value for shareholders. This is where a really powerful multiplier effect could kick in. So let's just look at the raw numbers here. Let's imagine a hypothetical $12 billion in Ethereum assets. With standard staking at 5%, that would generate $600 million in annual revenue. That's a great business. But with restaking, a 15% yield on that same asset base could potentially generate $1.8 billion in annual revenue. That's tripling the revenue with basically zero additional cost. Let's just pause on that number for a second. $1.8 billion in potential annual revenue. And remember, this isn't from the price of the asset going up. This is cash flow being generated by the assets themselves. So how would the market value a business with that kind of pure profit? Well, for a high-growth, high-margin tech company, a 20x price-to-earnings multiple is a pretty common way to look at it in a model like this. And when you do that simple math, 1.8 billion in profit times that 20 multiple, you land on a hypothetical market cap of $36 billion. This shows you the incredible power of the restaking multiplier. The value of the company can explode even if the price of its assets doesn't move an inch. So, to wrap this all up, let's zoom out. Because this isn't just a story about one company or one financial model. This represents a fundamental change in the economic engine of the entire digital asset world. We're at the very beginning of the yield-on-yield -yield revolution. At the end of the day, the business model for crypto infrastructure is changing. It's not just about hoping the price of your asset goes up anymore. It's about building a business that monetizes the trust that's baked into those assets. We're talking about the velocity of trust. This idea that trust can be rented out, reused, and put to work securing an entire ecosystem, generating more and more yield at every single step. 
This really is a whole new world. We're moving from a passive, single-job world to an active, multitasking one where capital efficiency is everything. For the sophisticated, industrial-scale players who can handle the risks, the opportunity is just immense. As the source material puts it so well, the layer cake is baking, and it smells like money. And that's our deep dive into the restaking layer cake. It's a huge shift in how digital assets can create value. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.